Hello friends, today we are discussing subject weight test medicine 2. <coughs> so question number 1. This is regarding average blood glucose levels. So obviously we know that average blood glucose level is decided by HbA1c. And so the answer is C. Remember, <coughs> HbA1c can be <coughs> falsely low in two conditions. In cases of anemia and in cases of hemoglobinopathies. In these two conditions, patient may be having high blood glucose levels, but HbA1c may be spuriously low. Next question is question number 2, which is an immunological marker of type 1 diabetes. Answer is B. <coughs> Third question, which of the following drugs does not cause hyperglycemia? You know in diuretics, thiazide type of diuretic causes hyperglycemia, not loop diuretics. So the answer is, question number 3 answer is D. Which adipokine reduces insulin resistance? That is question number four. It is leptin. Remember, leptin and ghrelin. The foreplay between leptin and ghrelin is responsible for our metabolic rate and formation of fat in our body thereby development or non-development of obesity is between the interplay of leptin and ghrelin right so leptin reduces insulin resistance so it promotes weight loss whereas ghrelin it increases insulin resistance it promotes weight gain This is question number four. Answer is leptin. Thrifty genes. Question number five. Thrifty genes are associated with which of the following diabetes? It is type two. Answer is B. See what happens is the thrifty genes were there and are there in our body since uh, you know the beginning of time and. Thrifty genes are responsible for formation of energy stores in our body. So when there was a time of feminine, when food was inadequate, so these thrifty genes were involved in the formation of fat, so that that fat can be used uh, during food scarcity. <coughs> Question number six. Which of the following is also known as diabetes or diarrhea? Please. This question should be read as which of the following disease are associated with diabetic diarrhea. So diabetic diarrhea is associated with celiac disease. Answer is C. It's an autoimmune disease. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease. Type 1 diabetes is autoimmune. So there is an association. Which of the following is an anti-diabetic drug? Question number 7. Answer is bromocriptine. It's a dopaminergic agent, bromocriptine, also used in patients. Bromocriptine is used if you have increased prolactin levels, then Parkinson's. and it's a new anti-diabetic drug.
क्वेश्चन नंबर एट लॉर कैसरिन लॉर कैसरिन इज एन एनोरेक्सिक एजेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर एट आंसर इज ए लॉर कैसरिन इज एन एनोरेक्सिक एजेंट इट एक्ट अपॉन फाइव एच टी टू सी रिसेप्टर्स देयर बाय इट डिक्रीजेज द फूड इन टेक एंड देयर बाय हेल्प इन कंट्रोलिंग डायबिटीज क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन Say is the deficiency of which of the vitamins can lead to lactic acidosis? Answer is thiamine because in treatment of lactic acidosis, thiamine is given. So deficiency of thiamine may have a, a effect of lactic acidosis as well. Answer is A. Question number ten. This is regarding seroglitazar. It's a new medicine. It's a new medicine, seroglitazar. It acts on both PPAR alpha and <coughs> gamma receptors. Thereby, it has it's a it's a medicine which works on two aspects. It works on fat as well as glucose. So thereby, it's an anti-lipidemic agent or hypolipidemic agent as well as it's a hypoglycemic agent too. So answer is. Both C. Question number eleven. Weight loss may be seen in all of the following. You know, uremia, adrenal insufficiency, pheochromocytoma. They are, uh, they have weight loss as one of the most important feature. Insulinoma. Insulin is a weight promoting hormone. Insulin. Remember, insulin means weight promoting. It's a lipogenic hormone. So, insulinoma is not associated with weight loss. So, answer is D. Question number twelve. Which of the following is not a parameter of metabolic syndrome? Obviously, raised LDL. It is HDL which is a part of metabolic syndrome, not LDL. So, answer is D. Question number thirteen. <coughs> Pre-tibial myxedema. Pre-tibial myxedema. It's a type of dermopathy of Graves' disease. Right? Graves' disease is a type of hyperthyroidism. All hyperthyroidism is not uh, uh, Graves' disease, but all Graves' disease are hyperthyroid. So it's a dermopathy of hyperthyroid Graves' disease. So answer is D. Question number fourteen. <coughs> Regarding iodine, which is false, see, iodine it inhibits synthesis of thyroxine. That is true. It prevents peripheral conversion of T4. That is also true, and it can be used preoperatively in hyperthyroid. That is also true. So the answer is contraindicated in hyperthyroid. In fact, in fact radioactive iodine, iodine 131, is a treatment of choice for hyperthyroidism. So iodine. Is contraindicated in hyperthyroidism? Is the answer? It is in fact indicated in hyperthyroidism. So answer is B. Question number fifteen. Trade of hypothesis. Trade of hypothesis is associated with chronic renal failure. See what happens in chronic renal failure. There is decrease one twenty five dihydroxy. Vitamin D three D three levels. So therefore, there is development of osteopenia, right? There is increase calcium in urine. So that is hypercalciuria. Right. So this is a trade of hypothesis. We should know that 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3 goes down, leading to lots of passage of calcium in the urine. That is hypercalciuria. 
also known as Which of the following is not associated with hypercalcemia? Obviously, diarrhea is not associated. In hypercalcemia, you have nausea, you have vomiting, and you have constipation, not diarrhea. So the answer is, for 15, the answer was A. Question number 16. Answer is A. Question number 17. All are causes of hypercalcemia except, see, uh, lithium can cause hypercalcemia, multiple myeloma can cause, in fact it is one of the important cause of hypercalcemia, vitamin A intoxication again can cause hypercalcemia, in chronic renal failure you have hypercalcemia, so the answer is B. Question number 18, hypercalcemia is characterized by all of the following features. Obviously, there is numbness in the perioral area, tingling in the fingers, there could be carpopedal spasm, and there is prolongation of QTC. So the answer is C. It is not shortening of QTC, it is prolongation of QTC. Question number 19. Which of the following syndrome causes hypomagnesemia? Remember, it is Gittelman syndrome. Features of tumor lysis syndrome. See, tumor lysis syndrome causes hypocalcemia, causes hyperphosphatemia, causes hyperkalemia, and there is acidosis. So, the only answer which is correct is hypocalcemia. Remember, tumor lysis syndrome increase in potassium increase in H ions, increase in phosphorus, decrease in calcium. Alright, this is tumor lysis syndrome. Question number 21, drugs causing hypophosphatemia, answer is D, remember this question as such. 21, answer is D. Question number 22, pheochromocytoma, pheochromocytoma as a part of multiple endocrine nuclei that is associated with medullary carcinoma of thyroid, remember it, the answer is this is question number 23. Answer is A. Regarding question number 22, all of the following are features of man to be syndrome except pituitary tumor. In man to be syndrome, we have involvement of thyroid with medullary carcinoma of thyroid, we have freochromocytoma, and you have mucosal neuromas. Right? So the answer for question number 22 is A. Question number 24. The answer is D. You know, this patient had recurrent episodes of headache and sweating. The mother had renal calculi and she had died because of a neck mass. So she fits into a patient of multiple endocrine neoplasia. So the best measurement would be screening for pheochromocytoma in this patient. That's best done by doing a 24 hour level of catechoramine, metanephrine, and vinyl metallic acid. So the answer is D. Question number 25, the differentiating factor between ectopic ACTH secretion and Cushing syndrome is, that is, hypokalemic alkalosis. In Cushing syndrome and ectopic ACTH secretion, remember it is hypokalemic 
help you process. Yeah. Pseudo Cushing syndrome is seen in well, it is seen in depression, it is seen in obesity, and seen in alcoholism too. The patient looks like as having Cushing syndrome but doesn't have a clinical profile or, or hormonal profile of Cushing syndrome. He just phenotypically looks as having Cushing syndrome. So the answer is D. Question number 27. In Addison's disease, the most diagnostic test is ACTH stimulation. See, in deficiencies, we do stimulation. Remember, in deficiency, you do stimulation test. And in increased secretion, we do suppression test. So, if you have a patient of Addison's, Addison's means you have low cortisol levels. So, it is deficiency. You stimulate it by giving an ACTH, the stimulation test. So, answer is D. Question number 28. Edema feet is not a feature of Kohn syndrome. That is, congestive heart failure can cause edema feet, hypothyroidism can cause edema feet, nephrotic syndrome obviously can cause edema feet. So answer is Kohn syndrome. <coughs> Question number 29. Clinical features of pheochromocytoma. Obviously low cortisol levels is a feature of Addison's disease, not pheochromocytoma. So answer is C. Question number 30. A patient, male patient, Complaints of loss of erection, low testosterone, high prolactin level. So high prolactin with suppression of other hormones is a classical feature of adenoma pituitary. Right, so answer is A. Octreotide, question number 31. is not useful in, see, octreotide can be used, it's, in fact, it's a drug of choice for insulinoma, it is used in carcinoid, it is used in glucagonoma, right, so answer is D, glioma. Question number 32, which of the brain tumor spreads via CSF? Remember, medulloblastoma spreads via CSF, answer is B. Question number 33, a patient of 35 year old coming to you with menstrual irregularity, galactoria, which shows that she has hyperprolactinemia, there is headache, there is bitemporal superior quadrantopia. So the answer is obvious, pituitary macrodinoma. <coughs> this lady has polydipsia, polyuria, the blood pressure is normal, there is no postural drop of blood pressure, sodium is slightly low. Urea is normal, blood sugar is normal, and plasma osmolality is also low normal, right? So, once you have <coughs> a low serum sodium and plasma osmolality which is either normal or low in a patient of polyuria, so diagnosis is psychogenic polydipsia. So the answer is B. Question number. 35. <coughs> Again, a similar question as 34. Patient had 
excessive thirst, nocturia, polyuria. Polyuria means anything above three liters, above three liters a day. This is polyuria. So now he, the patient has increased sodium levels. Right? Potassium is normal, calcium is normal, glucose is normal. Urine osmolality is low, 150. Degrees urine osmolality. So this is diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus. Now, how to differentiate diabetes insipidus? It is central or nephrogenic. You give ADH, antidiuretic hormone. If it is nephrogenic, right, ADH will not be effective. So ADH will not be effective because it is nephrogenic. So, and if it is central, ADH, administration of ADH will decrease the urine output. So, this is ADH test, different between central and nephrogenic diabetes in serious. So, question number 35, answer is B. Question number 36, SIADH occurs in which cancer? It is small cell carcinoma of lung which is associated with SIADH. The answer is C. The answer is C. Question number 37, <coughs> which test is used to diagnose Dubin Johnson syndrome? It is BSP test, BSP. Remember, Dubin Johnson is an autosomal recessive uh, disease. It is a benign disease. It never threatens the life of the patient. So, it is BSP test. Answer is B. Question number 38. Five nucleotidase activity. It's a marker of polystatic disorder. So, alkaline phosphatase, nucleotidase. They are marker of polystasis. So this answer is D. Question number 39. Low serum alkaline phosphatase. See, primary biliary cirrhosis will cause increased alkaline phosphatase. Hyperphosphatase is seen with high alkaline phosphatase. Similarly, hepatitis A. In cholestatic phase, hepatitis A can cause increased alkaline phosphatase. So the answer is hypothyroidism. So let's see. Question number 40. So this patient has a raised SGPT, SGPT, and remarkable alkaline phosphatase. So whenever we encounter a patient in whom we suspect cholestasis, the investigation of choice is ultrasound of the abdomen. So answer is A. When guinea needle is used for biopsy of which of the following organs? Answer is B. Needle. So question number 41. Answer is B. Question number 42. <coughs> Hidoid scan. Hidoid scan is used to diagnose acute cholecystitis. It's a technician 99 based scan, right? So, gallbladder and biliary tree is visualized by this scan. In cases of acute cholecystitis and biliary atresia, you know, hit eye scan is the scan of choice. So, acute polycystitis. Answer is A. Question number 43. See, what is the window period of hepatitis B? It is the disappearance of HBSAG and it is the appearance of NTHBs. See, so, disappearance of HBSAG and appearance of H NTH. So this is what is window period. NT 
H B S and H B S A G. In this window period, patient is infected, and the test for hepatitis B may be negative. So one has to remember this. Patient, despite being H B S A G negative, are infected. <coughs> Answer is A. Question number 44. Confirmatory test to establish acute hepatitis B infection. So once you have HBS AG positivity, it means that patient has hepatitis B surface antigen. It won't tell you whether it is acute or chronic. So to see whether it's acute infection, you need to do IgM core antibody. This is acute and IgG core antibody is chronic infection. HBE antigen is for infectivity. NP HBS is for protection or past infection. All right. Question number forty four. Answer is A. IgM core and the core antibodies. Question number 45. A nursing student who has completed hepatitis vaccine, as I already told you, once you are vaccinated, you have uh, antibodies against HBS. So, answer is B. Question number 46. This is regarding metavirus score. This is for classification of hepatitis. So the scoring is between 0 to 4. Remember it. Answer is A. Question number 47. Discriminant function is used in treatment of H drugs. It is steroid. It is a steroid. Prednisolone. Remember it. It is P. It is for alcoholic hepatitis, right? Discriminant fraction is used to stage the severity of alcoholic hepatitis. Thereby, we can use pentoxifarin, preferably steroid, for treatment of alcoholic hepatitis. <coughs> Question number. 48. Rockel score is used for, it is a score used for upper GI bleed. It is dependent upon age, presence or absence of shock and various other comorbidities. So Rockel score is used for treatment of upper GI bleed. Answer is A. Question number 49. Orthodexia. Orthodexia means Hypoxemia, when the patient comes from supine to sitting or standing posture, it is because of ventilation perfusion mismatch. It's not because of pulmonary embolism, it is because of hepatopulmonary syndrome. Answer is B. Question number 50. <coughs> Terry's nail, are seen in liver failure. It's a classical feature of liver failure. It's ground glass appearance of nails with absence of lenula. It is whitish, brittle nails with crown glass appearance and absence of lenula. Answer is C. Question number 
question number 51. All of the following are features of Wilson's disease except in Wilson's disease you have accumulation of copper. So you have liver failure, you have neuropsychiatric manifestations, right? And Coombs negative hemolytic anemia can occur, Cori is a part of uh, neuropsychiatric manifestation, active hepatitis can occur, testicular atrophy is not a feature, so answer is B.